Auraflow is the latest open source model that is making quite a bit of noise out there in the open source community. And today I want to show you how you can run it locally using Comfy UI. As always, make sure to check out the description for all the links that you need to run it. Auraflow was developed by a company called Fal or Fall.ai, whichever it is. And the main developer of Auraflow, known as Simo, he's actually the one that brought us all Loras. So upon hearing this, I had very high expectations. They show us these two examples on their blog page. And the main attraction, which has been a common theme for a lot of open source models these days, is the prompt adherence. Now, when you visit the blog page, you'll see the prompt here, and it highlights all these different aspects of the image from the woman's dress color, the piano, the objects in front of her, very specific details that it follows. Now, if you don't have the system specs to use it, you could click on this link here and you'll be brought to this web page where you could generate it. Just keep in mind because it's a public server, generation times can vary. And here are some examples that you can expect from this model. It does text pretty well in these examples. We'll talk about that a little more later. But the main expectation, as mentioned before, is the prompt adherence. And I would say personally, it's pretty impressive. Now to run it locally, you can only use it in Comfy UI. And the good news is if you have a card that's at least eight gigabytes of VRAM, you can run it in Comfy UI. That's the card that I have. I have a 3060 Ti. But anyway, for the model weights, all you have to do is click on the Hugging Face link here. I'll have a direct link in the description below. And then you wanna click on Files scroll down and there's only two files you need from here. This one obviously is the Auraflow model. It's a whopping 16 gigabytes. So give yourself some time to download it. Click on the arrow and download it. And here is the comfy UI workflow. You just drag and drop it. Obviously save the model in your checkpoints folder. Now within Comfy UI, make sure you have the latest version. To make sure, you just go into your manager here. You can either just click on Fetch Updates and then Update Comfy UI or Update All, which is what I normally do. And then you want to grab the Comfy UI workflow file and simply drag it into the workspace. And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. The main difference in this workflow is this one node. It's called Model Sampling or a Flow and you don't really have to do anything, leave it at its default settings. Now I'm gonna go back to my workflow. My workflow is the same, I just gave it some color and rearranged it. Now I do wanna cover a few things and please listen to this because there are a lot of comments I see on Reddit and social media where people really don't understand the whole purpose of why this release was done in the first place. First of all, it's a beta model. It's undercooked, it still needs to be trained. So things like photo realism body composition, certain styles don't work that well. So lower your expectations a little bit and stop comparing it to closed models like Dolly, Mid Journey, even stable diffusion fine tunes. This model is not even done. The main reason why it was released was to get feedback from the community. And they wanted people to try it out at home, give them feedback and show them what they're creating. Now let's talk about actually producing images with this model. What can you expect? Well, let's go over the settings first. And so far from my testing, and I've only been testing it for a day or two, I find 15 to 25 steps work. You may want to go down to 15 if your specs aren't that great. I find 20 to 25 is good enough. It likes lower CFG, even down to like two to four, I would say. I have not experimented with other samplers. I've been using UNI PC, seems to work very well. I did try a few with like DPM++ 2M. I mean, it worked, it wasn't artifacty or anything like that. I just found with this particular sampler, the results came up better. If you happen to try this out and you have a faster card, try the other samplers and let me know if you're getting better results. Now this particular prompt is like four or 500 tokens, I think. I had it custom done with ChatGPT. Basically, the more detail you give the model, the better results you're gonna get. And as you can see, the details look great. In this case, the body composition is actually pretty good. It's got an extra finger there. 
But in the prompt, there's a lot of details from the neon signs, the wet roads, the gold coloring on the rims. The prompt adherence is probably the best I've seen in an open source model in quite a while. Definitely rivals Pony, Pixar, heck, even SD3, I would say it's quite on par with it. Oh, and by the way, with these settings at 1024 by 1024, I'm averaging about 105 to 107 seconds, a little over a minute and a half, under two minutes. And at 704 by 1024, I'm averaging about 76 to 78 seconds. So again, if you have a faster GPU, it's going to be a much better experience for you. As I normally do with models that are supposed to be good at prompt adherence, I like to do the blue sphere atop a red cube test. And I tell you, it nailed it first try. Now, because I'm recording in the background, I'm not going to generate on the fly as I normally do. But basically, this is the results I got first shot. I then added in the prompt a dog on the left of the cube, a cat on the right of the cube. And technically it got it right, but it put the cat on the cube here. So I was more specific and I put dog sitting on the grass on the right of the cube, or sorry, left of the cube and cat sitting on the grass right side of the cube. It does take our perspective in the image. And once again, it got it first shot. This is quite impressive because if the model could follow direction to the T, then it limits the amount of times you have to generate images. Now in this example, I just played with the steps. I went 15, 20, 25, and 30. If we look at the image here, 15 steps, pretty decent, more than enough detail. If we switch over to 20 steps, you're gonna see a bit more detail, especially in the feathers. So here's 15 steps and 20 steps, 15 steps and 20 steps. Now we'll switch over to 25 steps. The coloring in the feather you notice here changes quite a bit. Some of the details on this decoration here. We'll switch back to 20, 25. Feathers over here are slightly different. And then we also see the collar here come back. That was there at 15 steps, disappeared at 20. So here was 15, 20, 25. And even the lighting is slightly better. And then 30. So 30, we show a little bit more teeth. We actually lose the color here. So that's why I think 25 is like the ideal steps. You could try going higher. But most models out there converge at about 30 steps. You go 40, 50, really doesn't make that much difference in general. I'm going to show you some examples really quickly. Some of them are short prompts. Some of them are very long prompts. This was a short prompt of a diamond encrusted car with gold trimming, marble floors, pretty simple prompt a steampunk styled chess piece that I thought really came out well. The textures of the wooded table here, this bronze like finish, the gears in the background. It doesn't do paper cut styles very well. This is, I would say a pretty short 75 token paper cut prompt and the details look pretty decent. It just doesn't adopt the paper cut style. Here I actually, I was quite surprised it understood Venom. I was making a Godzilla Venom hybrid character. Aesthetically, it's not not the greatest, could use some work. But again, beta model, lots of potential in terms of following the prompt that I put in. Now this one, I was very specific about the prompt and it followed it to the T. The prompt was basically a man in a business suit wearing a fedora in a 1950s retro cafe with a cup of coffee on the table and a plate of spaghetti and meatballs. Those are some damn big meatballs. <laughs> and then I had him holding a phone in one hand, looking at the phone. So he's not really looking directly at the phone, but it got all the little details. Now in terms of text, it tends to do simple words pretty well. In this case, it didn't do aura flow too well. It's trying to make a thumbnail using the actual model. This one came out pretty decent, although I wish the head wasn't cut off. This one turned out really well. And I went with this one for the thumbnail because of the angle, the vines coming out, details in the gears, looks really cool. For this one, it was a very long prompt, trying to be very specific on where the tech showed up. As you can see, it was a major fail, but it was asking a lot from this model. It did get the design and it got the artist right. It just, I don't know why it doubled the name. This one turned out 
pretty decently. At least it got the main title right, but the subtext here didn't turn out too well. You often see when you're doing people, you see this kind of fake, hyper-realistic kind of look when it comes to people. I find if you do like head and shoulder portraits, they come out more photorealistic. Cute little doggy here, although the paws look kind of weird. Tried a Siberian Husky and yeah, looks pretty decent. Definitely could use some improvements. We have a double tongue here. But again, this model is all about potential. I ended up recreating the prompt on the main page here and it gave me exactly the same result. I found this one fairly impressive where it even got the heart detail here in the middle, the white sugar around the cookie, different variation of the image we just looked at. But this is what I was talking about when you're doing like a head and shoulder shot of a character or person, it tends to do a little bit better. Although the ears are a little weird here. And hey, it almost can do bow and arrows. And I was playing around with textures like rust and grass and other than the composition of the car. Looks very believable actually. Here's one of a woman with paint all over her face looks fairly photorealistic. Now this prompt was very complex. It was about 300 tokens, a lot of details. I wouldn't say it followed the prompt to the T. It's almost like it got confused, but at the same time, I love the results. Got your standard car shot here. Turned out pretty cool. I like the car trails. But yeah, you can expect things like this with people where the composition's off. The typical full body details get lost, especially in the face. We'll have to see when the official version is out if that turns out any better. But I find for artistic and creative images, it does pretty well. I liked how this samurai one came out. I did a couple of variations here. I also like to do hybrid heroes combining Batman and Superman. And this one actually turned out pretty good some mech-like cats with a lot of details and once again I was actually really impressed on how it followed all the little details in my prompts. Weapon-like claws, the glowing cables around it, the white armor and honoring, sort of like a panther. So the only advice I can give you really is just experiment with it. Try it with short prompts, try it with traditional tag-like prompts, but I highly encourage you to use something like ChatGPT, get it over 100 tokens, 300 tokens, and you'll be surprised on how much detail you can get from your images with this Auraflow model. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is the model of the future. So far from what I've seen, in my opinion, this looks very promising and uh, I can't wait till they release the fully trained model. If it's already capable of doing these images, I think we're all going to be pleasantly surprised. Now in the meantime, if you want a fully trained model that adheres to your prompt better than SDXL, have you heard of Pony? I covered a little bit in this video and I have a dedicated video that I'm going to release very soon talking about the various fine-tuned pony models. Until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.